Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Weinstein. I'm one of the instructors for Hacking for, Decla Hacking for Defense class. Thanks all for you coming tonight. We really appreciate it because I know I would be remiss as in last week and not acknowledging that this is stressful times for all of us. Um, everyone is facing a lot of pressures along with for me and others raw emotions and I'm personally distressed and angry, but I'm personally hoping that I can make this coming year better. And with that in mind, I want to reach out to anybody on this Zoom who might be feeling stressed and need someone to reach out to, to please get in touch with the teaching staff, particularly the H4D um, students, just to know that we're here for you during these times. But with that, I want to switch over to the class for tonight. Um, I'm positive enough. I am thrilled to be part of Hacking for Defense. Think about it. This was a team sport. It was done entirely amazingly online and remote. And as you can see by everybody here, you know, I think we're going to have a great evening. So first, I'm going to start off talking a little bit about the agenda. Um, I'm talking for a little bit and telling you, and I'm going to do a bunch of thanks. Um, um, Steve Blank is going to get on and give you an introduction to Hacking for Defense. And then we're going to have three of the eight presentations starting around 4.50 if we stay on schedule, uh, maybe earlier. And then um, the talk with um, Joe Felter and General Mattis around 5.30. We'll take a break after that. Um, and then we'll have the final five presentations and then a wrap up and final remarks by Pete Newell. Okay, but before we get into that, I wanted to thank um, Tom Byers, who has been a massive supporter at TVP for this class. And I know you, Tom, you want to say a few words. You have to go off mute. Yep, off of mute. Uh, good evening and uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Steve, for this opportunity. I just wanted uh, people to realize something that uh, this course is, got a, is put on by MSNE as a department. That's the Management Science and Engineering Department, which I'm lucky to be a professor in and have been for 25 years. When I arrived 25 years ago, uh, I was mentored by Bill Perry who had Secretary Mattis's job the year before that and just returned to Stanford to be in our department. Our department's always had a close relationship between and, and connection with both engineering and technology on one hand, but also national security in another. So it's been really pleasing to see that um, in, in my capacity of being an entrepreneurship professor that we've been able to connect entrepreneurship to national security because of the work of the people that have been teaching you. I'm talking specifically the Stan uh, Stanford students who took this class and amazing teaching team as you experience. I had the luck of being able to work with Joe and Pete and Steve the first year it was put on. This is the fifth year. And again, it, it, is, it carries on a, a rich tradition that started when Bill Perry came back from the, the, the Defense Department. And by the way, there was no ms &E when he was back. It was uh, Industrial Engineering Department. He's the one that chaired the committee that created this department that put on this course. So um, it's really, really special to be here. I, I don't know if Bill Perry is on the, uh, the Zoom tonight, or he'll, I'm sure and hope you'll get the chance to, to hear this because we're all here because of Bill. The department's here because of Bill Perry. He was a great uh, advisor to this course as Steve and Pete and Joe were getting it stood up five years ago. And, you know, it's 2020 with all these things going on. But one thing that's really a bright spot in, in the department and for all of us associated with the Entrepreneurship Center is this course and what it means to connect it with national security and, and in a service kind of mentality, because that's the best kind of entrepreneurship. So thank you very much, Steve Weinstein, for giving me that opportunity. Great. Thank you, uh, Tom. And um, I want to do a few more thanks this evening. Because um, um, even though there are eight teams who you're going to hear tonight, there is a group of over 50 people who have been selflessly dedicating their time to helping these teams from the problem sponsors who define the problem through mentors, advisors, teaching team, TAs, sponsors, and speakers, all surrounding these teams over these last 10 weeks. And to give you an idea of just who they are, um, we got Steve Blank, who you can hear from later. You know, he 
co-created Lean Startup. He's the father of Lean Entrepreneurship. He's the co-author of this class, you know, leading the charge with me, myself, Pete Newell, who also was one of the co-authors of Hacking for Defense, as well as been, you know, this bridge between Washington and, and the Defense Department in Silicon Valley. We got Tom Bedeker, who, um, who's been involved being corralling all the mentors and advisors as well in helping all the students and um, during the class. We got um, Joe Felter, who you'll hear a little bit later from, who's a fellow at Hoover, but recently returned from the Pentagon. And he's also a co-author of Hacking for Defense. So you have this core team that started this class and, and, and carrying it forward. Um, you have Jeff Decker, who's been rallying around in the background, helping getting the sponsors for the, for the students, as well as, you know, managing Stanford and helping us during this class. We also have an amazing group of course advisors with Arun, Sally, Tom, who you just met, and of course, Bill Perry. So now you have this just from the Stanford side, all of these people working on this. But in addition, every team had a problem sponsor. This is a person who brought the problem to the students. And we have everyone from the Air Force, Army, Incutel, um, Joint Staff of Staff, Jake, SOCOM, all of these people, thank you. In addition, we had defense mentors. These were people who helped people navigate through the, um, the Department of Defense. You gotta remember many of these students had not known anything about the military or Department of Defense or intelligence community. Thank you all. In addition, we gave th 13 individuals to help the eight teams understand entrepreneurship. This was a group of, of people who've been around Silicon Valley or been helping in lean startup and hacking for defense and dedicating their time all free to each team had their own mentor. Thank you. And then we had military senior advisors who helped, you know, some of the students and helped with some of the problems. Thank you. And, but all of this could not have been ha possible without our three TAs um, of Nate, Sam, and Valeria all of them who basically corralled 30 plus students, 34 students, 50 uh, other people, all coming in and out of meetings and, um, and coordinated this entire thing. And I won't really reach out to you all, say thanks a lot. In addition, I, I can't believe it. This year, we were able, Joe Felter gets a lot of the credit for allowing us to have each of these 10 individuals who were part of the class by joining the class and doing a Q&A with Joe. Tonight, we're honored to have General Mattis, but over the last nine weeks, we've had a bunch of amazing individuals. So with that, you could see we had an amazing group of people around these students, but you might be saying some of you who've never been here before, what is that? How do we get here? And it happened due to our course sponsors. These are people who kind of helped with the finances, helped introductions. We have ONR, who was the primary sponsor, STVP with an, an MSNE at Stanford, Ensign that runs the national program, CMP uh, for Hacking Defense, CMP Common Mission Project, which is the nonprofit helping um, push Hacking for Defense worldwide, and then Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman. All of these sponsors were helping us put this class on. So together, all of this put on the Hacking for Defense class. But what is the Hacking for Defense class for some of you who don't know? What is a lessons learned presentations and what are you gonna to see tonight? I hand it off to Steve. Um, thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, you, you know, uh, I thought we'd maybe just spend a minute uh, going through what the class is about uh, um, and what is it you're gonna see in the, in, in the next hour or so. Uh, next slide. So uh, the goals of the class, we had three. Number one, we wanted the students to actually work on the country's toughest problems and see if they can actually rapidly provide uh, preliminary solutions using something called the Lean Startup Methodology and Lean Launchpad Methodology. Number two is we wanted the students to actually get a firsthand experience about the nation's threats and challenges, not just reading about it in a newspaper or taking a class, but actually working with innovators and sponsors and beneficiaries and stakeholders inside the DOD. And then finally, um, you know, when Pete and I and Joe created this class, 
one of the things we shared was we, we truly wanted to help the country bridge the civilian military divide and allow students to do that while engaging in public service. And this is kind of our poor man's, how do we create some form of national service? And, and uh, the, the class, uh, next slide. The class does this by getting problems from sponsors through uh, Defense Innovation uh, Unit and, uh, and Ensign. Uh, and the, these problems come to us from uh, people inside the Department of Defense and Intelligence community. The students look at those lists of problems and form teams before the class, interview uh, uh, to get accepted, and then work on that, those problems by talking to 10 to 15 stakeholders, customers, beneficiaries, regulators every week, next. And they have to build what's called the minimum viable product, which some of you might think of as a prototype, but sometimes could just be, show me a, you know, a spec sheet or show me a problem statement or show me a wireframe or actually build me some hardware or software or, or build a physical cardboard device that shows me weight or size or something else. Uh, and every week or every couple of weeks, we want to see some progress, not just on who did you talk to, but how did they react to when you put something in front of them? And how we teach it is what's called a, what's called a flip classroom. Um, instead of us standing in front and lecturing for three hours, the lectures are actually recorded as homework. Um, and what's typically homework, do a bunch of stuff outside the class, it, it, is while they do those interviews out of, outside the class, they have to present what they found to the teaching team every week. And so there's kind of a, a, a almost a repeatable pattern of every week, uh, tell us what you thought, tell us what you did, tell us what you found, and tell us what you're going to do next week. Next slide. And so the journey is about learning and discovery, not how smart I am at the end of this class, which is what some of you might be familiar with as a end of class demo day. You know, that's kind of like a beauty contest. We're more interested is how did these students get to this conclusion and what did they learn and how did they learn it? So next. So what is this lessons learned presentation? Remember, you're going to see eight of them. Um, and they'll be in the format of uh, uh, teams have done a two minute video, which either have some explanatory material or, or uh, something about their journey, and then an eight minute PowerPoint presentation live as they'll present. Next. So as I said, it's a summary of what the teams learned in 10 weeks of the class. And by the way, and, and even though they didn't expect it, what their sponsors learned while the teams were learning. Because as you'll discover is sometimes the problem is given sometimes turns out to be just a symptom of the problem, or sometimes turns out to be the problem is a little more complex. Next. And they're going to do this using what we call the lean startup methodology. And for those of you in the DOD, lean in, in, in the context of this class uh, doesn't mean uh, less billets. It actually has a formal meaning of a methodology I'll explain in the next three slides. Uh, so remember, the students are starting with tough problems given to them by the Department of Defense. Here were the eight problems that the eight teams you're going to see were working on this quarter. Um, and you'll hear each one of them talk about the problem is given as day one and then what they found for the next 10 weeks. Next. Now, what's really interesting is that we kind of tell them you're starting with a problem, but instead of just jumping into a solution, why don't you think through all the things necessary to actually solve that problem and not get to a demo, but to get to deployment? And I think that's just one of the differences of the class is, well, we're interested in finding mission solution fit, that is that connection between who the beneficiaries are and what they could build to solve the problem, we're also interested in is what's it going to take to get it into the hands of those people? What kind of funding? Um, you know, how does it become a program of record? Where do you go next, et cetera? But all these things on day one next are just guesses. And we use something called the mission model canvas to kind of articulate what all these guesses or assumptions or hypotheses are on day one. And so you're going to see in multiple, in almost every presentation, multiple mission model canvases, which are just kind of like scorecards of here's what we're thinking and here's what we're learning at this point in time in the class. And what's very interesting is to see 
that canvas evolve as the teams get smart next. But one of the things we've recognized is, you know, on day one, you could write all the things you want as a set of requirements or a potential solution and, and assume you are the smartest person in the room. But what we discovered is there's no possible way to be smarter than the collective intelligence of potential users and beneficiaries and stakeholders. And so therefore that means there are no facts inside the building, so the teams needed to get the heck outside. And by getting outside, next Steve, um, they're gonna use a second part of the lean methodology, which is called customer development. And customer development is just a formal way to run experiments to test these hypotheses outside the classroom. Now, uh, next. Now, this is hard enough to do in a regular class when they physically can get out and visit aircraft carriers or, or uh, forward operating bases. Last year, some a team in the middle of, uh, of the semester literally got on an airplane and flew out to the DMZ and, and personally interviewed uh, customers in the middle of, uh, of Korea. But, but this time, this class had a handicap of having to do this customer discovery all via Zoom. Just an amazing uh, set of activity. And, and I want you to know that in aggregate, these teams have talked to over a thousand beneficiaries and stakeholders in 10 weeks. Just amazing. Next. And what this allows them to do is something that, again, in the commercial world, we adopted a couple decades ago and the DOD is is I think beginning to understand its power, not only in, in this process, but in how it affects contracting and requirements and acquisitions. And it's this concept of a pivot. And a pivot basically says, you're allowed to be wrong of your requirements and your understanding of the problem without blowing everything up. It simply says, we've gathered enough evidence now that says perhaps there are assumptions about you know, what the solution should be or wrong. Or perhaps we're talking to the wrong people or perhaps that our path to deployment is just missing a couple of steps. And so when you hear the word pivot, understand it means that we've discovered something that means we have to make a change in some of our assumptions. Next. And then finally, these teams use something called agile engineering. Um, and this is what allows them to be lean. And agile is just a fancy word for saying you could build products and services in the 21st century, which includes hardware as well as software, incrementally and iteratively. That means you don't have to build the entire system or even a big chunk of the system to get feedback to figure out whether you're on the right path or not. And so next, so every, every week or every other week, you'll hear these students talk about what's called minimum viable products. And a minimum viable product could be, you know, dummy screenshots or, or algorithms to test image processing or some demos of battery technology to actually put in front of potential users and customers and say, what do you think? Would this solve the problem we've been talking about? They get feedback and then they get to either validate their hypotheses or invalidate or, or move on to the next thing. So that's what the lean method is. And that's what you're gonna be seeing in these presentations, this language, this methodology, and more importantly, this speed. Just imagine of what these teams are accomplishing in this short period of time. So in these 10 weeks, their goal was one, understand the problem. And, and as Steve said, most of these students had never seen the DOD before in their lives. Uh, some of them had military service, the majority don't. And then they were searching for what we call mission solution fit. Do they understand what the real needs are and could they deliver a solution that, that theoretically could fit? And they built these MVPs to test them. And more importantly, the end goal was not a demo. This is different than most incubators and accelerators. You know, demo does not mean deployment in our mind. Deployment means getting stuff in people's hands. So what's that path? Next. Just some background and then I'll be quiet and we'll turn on the, the teams themselves. Uh, as Tom Byers mentioned, the, this whole uh, process started when I wrote what was called the Lean Launchpad class at Stanford now uh, almost a decade ago. Next. Uh, that class um, became, um, was adopted by the National Science Foundation um, and I wrote the uh, NSF i -Corps curriculum that's now in 98 universities. Um, I wrote a version for uh, UCSF that became adopted by the NIH for therapeutics, devices, diagnostics, and digital health. Next. 
And then Steve Weinstein and I uh, went into the uh, uh, NSA and uh, delivered the first version of uh, i -Corps for the NSA and Matt Fante and Kevin Keaton uh, scaled it to something uh, across the IC that's larger than the uh, National Science Foundation version. Next. And then, um, Oops, the Hacking for Defense uh, thing got a little circled out, but on, on the top, uh, um, Hacking for Defense started, as Tom mentioned, five years ago. Uh, that's now sponsored, as I mentioned, by uh, DIU and Ensign, and it's in 30, going to 40 universities today as a national program. We also started here at Stanford Hacking for Diplomacy, the same year we started uh, Hacking uh, for Defense with uh, Professor Jeremy Weinstein. Columbia University started Hacking for Energy, Steve Weinstein did Hacking for Nonprofits and Hacking for Cities in uh, UC Berkeley. And this year, Steve Weinstein uh, ran uh, Hacking for Oceans in, um, in Scripps and Santa Cruz simultaneously, an uh, unimaginable uh, juggling act. And so this class is just one piece of the Hacking for environment. And here at Stanford during the summer program, um, this teaching team uh, will be uh, putting on Hacking for Recovery a series of classes, uh, short five-day classes, using the same methodology to help businesses uh, think about new business models um, and uh, recover uh, their existing ones. So with that, Steve, I, I think I'm done. Um, and then I'll turn it over to you. And we're within five minutes. All right. So our, now for everybody, we're going to start going into the presentations. Our first presentation is Omniscient, um, followed by Anthro Energy and then Protocol One. So Omniscient, you're up. And I'll begin by sharing their video. So we're going to see a two-minute video followed by their presentation. 